God, we love you. We thank you so much for this day, uh, Lord. And we do just lift up Tyra before you. We ask you, Lord, to uh, just comfort her and help her, Lord, if she's hurt or shaken up. We just pray, Lord, that you would um, uh, bring healing to her body and just, uh, Lord, give her give her peace if she's uh, just shaken up from the accident. And uh, we thank you for that. And we ask you, Lord, just to be with our hearts and right now as we uh, enter into this uh, see you on, in need of direction and uh, just ask you to speak to our hearts and our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, today we're talking about uh, walking with the wise. Uh, and as you can see, if you're a part of secondary chapel, I'm cheating a little bit uh, um, and actually using um, some of the same outline. I didn't, I didn't intend for this to be the case. <coughs> both, um, both the CU and the uh, secondary chapel schedule was planned a long time ago before this, uh, b before I knew the, the date and the coordination of them, but just so happened that we were talking this last week in secondary chapel about a very similar subject. So as I was preparing, uh, <coughs> yeah, I cheated and just used some of the same outline uh, that I'm going to give you today. So if you were in secondary, some of this you have already heard. I apologize for that, but uh, thank you for listening again. Um, we're going to start with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. My belief is that for every single one of us, God seeks to give us direction in this life that can sometimes be so chaotic and sometimes it can be so confusing. Uh, so many times and so many seasons in this life, uh, we get to a place where we don't know uh, what decision we should make, what direction we should go, uh, what is the proper course of action. And it, those times can be very overwhelming. We have all been there without exception, right? It is, it is difficult. Um, and sometimes we view those, those seasons of life as maybe God just doesn't care or God isn't interested in what is going on in my life in that moment. Uh, but, but I believe that it's in those times that, that our devotion to God is maybe built, uh, built the strongest and, and molded into the, the strongest version of itself. Because it's in those times that if we live according to, to Scripture, that we can learn a real dependence upon the Lord. The Bible has laid out for us some, some really great principles of, of things that we can do in this life uh, to, to walk in the Lord's ways, to, to have His direction as a compass in our, in our life. Um, and so maybe uh, as we're going through this, it might just seem like sort of a, a patchwork quilt or a hodgepodge of things that maybe don't make sense. But as you're in a season of life where maybe you're, you're struggling to find clarity with direction, Maybe it'll be one of these that you will realize, wait, that area is an area of struggle right now. Maybe if maybe I need to bring that into alignment with God's Word in order to get the direction for this season in my life. So I hope that you will listen to all of these and, and just keep them in mind. And if there are certain areas that you have struggle, at some point the Lord will bring it back to you. Um, there's three kinds of people that, that, that are talked about in, in Proverbs. And, and we've probably discussed this at some point before, but, but uh, it, it, there's, there's the wise person, right? And the, the wise person is the person who knows the difference between right and wrong and chooses to do what is right. Uh, that's, that's wisdom. That's a, that's a wise person. There's the fool uh, the, the fool is the person who knows the difference between right and wrong and chooses to do what is wrong. All right, that, that is the, the mark of a fool. Then there's the scoffer, right, who, who encourages wrongdoing or makes fun of people who, who do right. Uh, so those, those three kind of, those three people are mentioned a lot through, through Proverbs. Now I give you that because, um, to, to start because, the Bible, the Bible is very clear that 
The people we surround ourselves with uh, will have a lot to do with the direction our life takes. And when we are in the middle of, of perhaps a season where we are lacking direction or, or we need direction, a lot of times it is the people that we put around us that we lean on to help us during those, during those times. And if we put fools around us or scoffers around us, uh, even though we might consider ourselves to a person who would want to walk in wisdom, if we put fools or scoffers around us, uh, when it comes time to make a decision, if we're leaning in on them, uh, we're going to find that many times we make the wrong or the foolish decision. Even though we want to walk in wisdom, and we might even consider ourselves a person that is, that is wise or, or, or loves the Lord, we might find our, ourselves heeding the advice of a fool and walking in the wrong direction. Uh, that's, that's why Proverbs, and, and I just... I just got a few verses in here, but the truth is, if you if you go throughout Proverbs, this is a theme throughout, all right? And so it is hard to find one proverb that you can't find this, uh, this idea of the association of friends and the importance of the association of friends in our life as, as important in, in, in so many ways. So I just pulled out a couple of verses for you. Proverbs 12, 26, the righteous should choose his friends carefully. And then get this, for the way of the wicked does what? Leads them astray or puts them or gets them in the wrong direction, sets their life in the wrong direction. For the way of the wicked leads them in the wrong direction. Another verse in, in 1 Corinthians 15.33, bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. Now, uh, because a few weeks ago I hung out with Miss Hayes uh, L, uh, pre-K class, I, I still feel sort of in that pre-K kind of mood, right? It was weeks ago, but I still feel it. So uh, every morning, Every morning, uh, we all have responsibilities, right? In our in our homes, if you live with class or if you live with uh, 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 coworkers, you live with family. Everyone has responsibilities. My responsibility, because I, I get up early, and uh, because my hair doesn't take quite as much maintenance time. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Right. Uh, uh, you know, I, so I get ready much quicker than everyone else in our in our house. Well, so one of my responsibilities has always been to uh, make breakfast for for our daughters so they can have a good meal before they go to school. Right. Uh, and so every morning and I'm sure she gets sick of it. I, I get into these ruts, uh, you know, that usually last a year or two. Um, and, and I'll make the same thing for them over and over, but I always try to spice it up. Right. And so for Mia, for Mia, for the last year, uh, every morning she gets eggs, right? So, but because eggs are just so plain, uh, we try to spice it up a little bit for her. So it will go a little something like this. I'll first take some of Chifong's mushrooms, right? Because you, you can't have good scrambled eggs without some sautéed mushrooms, right? Correct? Yes, right? Chifong, this is your time to say amen. <laughs> All right, so I will throw some, some mushrooms in the pot, get those sautéing, because Mia really likes the, the uh, green and red peppers. I will throw some green and red peppers into the mix. <laughs> Um, and get those going, get those sauteed up really, really nice, right? And even maybe a little bit of, little bit of onion in there just to add some flavor, a little salt and pepper. And then just get it going, baby. All right? And, and I, I mean, believe it or not, this, like, we get this going, and it is really... It is five star. I mean, I, I, it's been over a year now. I'm sort of perfecting this idea of, of scrambled eggs in the morning. Um, and, and these are some great ingredients, right? 
Everybody agree? These are, these are pretty good. Mia's doing pretty good in the mornings, right? <laughs> I learned that in Amy's pre-K class, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, uh, which I would have probably ignored, right? No, I didn't, I didn't. No. How many would like a bite of this omelet? Thank you. I mean, there there are a lot more good ingredients in here than bad, right? I mean, these peppers are very fresh. Chifong just picked the mushrooms yesterday. <laughs> Uh, the egg just was laid by a chicken within the last week. So pretty much everything in here is good. But how many know no matter what I do now, no matter what I do, I can never, I can never make this omelet, scrambled egg, I can never make this good enough for you to eat again. Right? How many would say there is nothing, no amount of salt, no amount of pepper, no amount of seasoning, no amount of vegetables, no amount of eggs that can make this good again, right? Would you agree with that? All right. Um, here's, here's the deal, guys. Listen, because sometimes we, as adults, I think we might, we might grow up past this and we might think that this is a lesson for kids when we're talking about the people we put in our life as friends, but I, I think maybe this is even more important for us as adults. Every component of your life can be great. But if you put the wrong friends around you, if you have the wrong voices speaking into your life, even though everything else might be great, your life is always going to lack the direction and the health that you need to be successful in life. Now this, as we become adults, this gets much harder than I think it does for kids. We preach these messages to kids, but this becomes much harder for us because we find ourselves in a circle of coworkers, right, that we are naturally have to be around every day. We have within our, within our circles, uh, we have family members that as we, as we get older, we sort of feel this obligation to have them in our omelet, right? Even if, they ha even if they are contaminating us, even if they are gossiping, even if they are giving us bad advice, we feel because they're, because they're our aunt or because they're our cousin, right? Because they're our moms. All right, we have to have them, we have to have them in our omelet, right? Because they're a coworker, we have to we have to be around them. Listen, there are people in our life as adults that are going to have to be on the shelf of our pantry. But that doesn't mean they got to be in the frying pan with your omelet. All right, because listen to me, listen to me, get it in your head and maybe <laughs> never hear this verse the same again. Bad company Bad company. One Louis of snot spit corrupts the whole omelet. Bad company. One person that is gossiping in your life. One person that is brooding negativity in your life. One person that, that has selfish ambitions in your life. One person will corrupt your good character. One person will cause you to go in the wrong direction. Wrong friends, wrong direction. Wrong ingredient, bad omelet. Right? All right, so, so listen, two things, two things that we should never let our friends do. Like, like you can't control the fact that they're your family. They're in the cabinet of your life, and you shouldn't say to your family, you're no longer my family. They're in your pantry. All right? But that doesn't mean you have to pull them out and put them in your omelet. You work with them. But if they are a negative influence in your life, that doesn't mean they have to be in the inner circle, in the main ingredients of your life. 
Two things we should never let friends do. We should never let them distract us from God's plan. If you've got someone in your life that is constantly, constantly gossiping to you, listen, remember what we say, anyone who will gossip to you will at some point gossip about you. And if you get around someone and all they want to do is talk about other people, all they want to do is, is, is be negative when they are around you, they are distracting you from God's plan and you don't need them in the ingredients of your life. Like you don't need them in your inner circle. They will, they will prevent you from going in the right direction. They, they will prevent you from, from the best life that God called you to live. Our friends should never distract us from God's plan and they should never continually tempt us to sin. All right, so if you've got someone in your life that, that's close to you and, and you find yourself doing things that you shouldn't be doing when you're around them or you find yourself maybe in questionable scenarios when they're around, maybe you find yourself, it's a something, something as simple. Don't, don't think, well, he's talking about, I'm not, I'm not doing anything sinful in my life. Well, when you get around that person, do you find yourself all of a sudden with a gossiping tongue? then you know what? That person is tempting you to sin. The influence of their life is tempting you to sin. God has not called us to be people as followers of Christ who get around one another. And did you hear what so-and-so did? Did you hear what so-and-so did? Can you believe it? Can you believe that? That isn't the life God has called us to do. And if you have someone in your life that when you get around them, that's what they're bringing out of you, they're bad companies corrupting your omelet. There are bad ingredients in your life and you either need to confront them on it and let them know, man, we got to change the dynamics of this relationship because we're not lifting one another up here and because we're not lifting one another up. When we get together, we're tearing a lot of people down, but we're not lifting people up and we're not lifting ourselves up. So we're preventing ourselves from going in the best direction with this friendship and with our life. So we need to change the dynamics of this or I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to move away a little bit from, from spending so much time in this relationship because it's not good for me. So, so good friends will never, uh, they will never distract us from God's plans or continually tempt us to sin. Th four things and we'll close out. I spent too much time on my nasty omelet. By the way, I'm going to cook this up in the science lab for anyone who wants some. What does that mean? Thank you, Pac. Thank you. Thank you. We will partake together. Listen, guiding friendships that will guide us, that will help us find direction in life are those that exhibit an unconditional love, an unwavering support. Because you're filling the blanks, let me go slower. Un, uh, uh, an unconditional love, an unwavering support, a willingness to challenge. That's what I was just talking about. Like if you have somebody in your life that you can see this isn't healthy, you know what? A good friend is willing to, to challenge that and say, man, this just isn't cool. We're not, we're not pushing each other towards Christ or towards healthy things. And, and we got to challenge one another in this relationship to be better because we're tearing others down and by doing so, we're be making ourselves fall lower. All right? Uh, so so be, uh, have a willingness to challenge one another. And, it, and if you have a good friend in your life who can't accept a healthy, godly challenge, then they're really not a great friend, are they? All right, again, put them on the shelf, but don't put them in the pot. All right? Fourth, they're full of grace. They're full of grace, uh, which means, man, they, they, they forgive us. They, they will help us. Uh, when, when maybe we do wrong, uh, they, will, they will forgive us and love us even in, even in those, those moments. Now, again, I end on that last one, but I still say to you, we need to, be, we need to have friendships that are full of grace, but don't, don't, uh, don't look at that grace as one of, of, I have to accept. I have to accept the bad stuff and keep throwing it in my pot. There reaches a point for all of us where we say, you know what, I've given grace and I'm going to continue to love, but I, the greatest grace I can give at this point is to say, you're going in my cabinet, but not in my pot, all right? 
I love you. I love you unconditionally, which means I'm not going to discard you from my life. I'm not going to put you in the trash can, but I'm also not going to put you here, okay? So don't think because we're showing unconditional love or an unwavering support that that's just a, that's just a, a blanket way of saying, you've got to be in my pot no matter what. No. You can be in my shelf without being in my pot, all right? Hope that wasn't too confusing or nasty for you. If it was, see Miss Hayes and go to her preschool class, all right? Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you so much that you've given us great friends in this life that help us and that guide us in the directions that you want us to go. Help us all, Lord, to surround ourselves with wise people and not foolish, and let us be that same kind of friend to others, Lord. Let us not be a kind of friend uh, or be the kind of friend that, that, we, that we hope we don't surround ourselves with, but let us be the kind of friend that we desire to have in our life. And when we do that, we know that we will spur one another on in the right direction for our lives. We love you and we thank you in your name. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day.